In this video, let's talk about Ubiquiti Unify Management VLAN. If you are like me as a home user, initially you may only had one or two Ubiquiti devices and then to make your network simplified, so you simply adopt your unified devices to your default network. But after you brought your Unify devices one by one to your network, then one day when you look at DHCP server's client list, you may think, hmm, I should have grouped them in a separate VLAN. Let's discuss how we can do it in Unified World. If you search Wikipedia, you can find this very short article about management play. And on internet, you can find many Cisco related management network information. But when it comes to Unified devices, there's very little information on the internet. Basically, you want to use management VLAN to separate your unified devices and you do not pass through the other network's traffic through your management network. And you can set up your firewall so that you can decide which computer can access your management VLAN. In the left, you can see the Unify controller. For most of the devices, I already manage them in the separate management VLAN. As you can see in the network column, most of them are showing the separate VLAN already, but I leave four of them for this video. They are four different types of Unify devices. We need different approaches to put them into the management VLAN. The first device is a Unify Switch, the non-pro 24 parts version. And then we are going to put this AP to the management VLAN. And then let's try a special device. It's the redundant power supply device. The last one is a very strange or weird unified device. Uh, most people don't have it. So basically it's just a smart plug and the unique thing for it is it's connected wire Wi-Fi. So it need different approaches. After discussing the four different Unify devices, let's talk about your Unify controller. Question is whether you want to put the controller device. In my case, it's the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. Whether you want to put it in the management VLAN or not, and what's the pros and the cons. And if you do want to put it in the separate VLAN, what's the different ways to do it. And then in the end of the video, let's talk about, okay, now you have a separate management VLAN, how you can adopt your future new unified devices. Because once you have the management VLAN, the way to adopt devices might be different depending on where is your unified controller. In my home network, I use PFSense as the router and the firewall. You may use, uh, for example, UDM Pro, so the setup might be different, but the end result should be the same. Before we can start changing the unified device settings, we need to first create the VLAN and we need to define the firewall rules. Because I use PFSense, let's show you the simple settings we need to do. First, of course, you need to introduce a VLAN. Here I have the VLAN 15 defined for the Unified Management VLAN. As you can see, nothing special, simply give it a VLAN tag. Of course, you need to create a new interface assignment and using this VLAN. And then once you are done, you need to make the firewall rules. There are mainly two considerations when you define the firewall rules for the management VLAN. One is where you put your unified controller. If you put it in this management VLAN, then you have to give it internet access if you want to upgrade the unified controller itself through internet. And then the second consideration is about your unified devices. 
The reason your unified devices need internet access is mainly during the firmware upgrade process. Uh, because in my situation now, as you can see, all the firmwares are up to date. But if you do see a blue text here, it shows you, okay, now you, there's new firmware you can upgrade. Once you click it, what will happen? The device which downloads the new firmware will not be your unified controller. It will be your device itself. Here I show you a screenshot. So this is just an example. So once you click the upgrade uh, link here in your device OS, it will issue this shell script and it will download the new firmware from internet. That's why in my PFSense firewall rules, I give the whole Unify management VLAN the uh, internet access. Of course, there's many other ways to upgrade your devices. You don't have to do so. Uh, we will talk about the details. The next setting you want to make is your PFSense DHCP server for the new management VLAN. The one thing I want to mention is about the range. As you can see here, I have a very narrow range, only two uh, IP address available in the pool. The reason is that normally when you have a management VLAN, you want to have fixed IP address for your devices. But on the other hand, you also need DHCP because when you first change your unified device from the default network to your management VLAN, it will need your management VLAN's subnet IP address, but normally it will be achieved through DHCP. So that's why you do need DHCP server, but you don't want to give it a very wide range as in your normal network. After creating the VLAN in PFSense, we need to make corresponding changes in Unify controller because we are not using UDM Pro. I have to change it in a slightly different way. So I'm in the so-called classic UI and I go to setting network and it lists all my uh, network. This one is the one I created for the new management VLAN. Let's add it to see what's inside. I put it as the VLAN only because it's management by my external router, which is PFSense. So that's why here I say VLAN only. Then I give it the same VLAN uh, tag ID. That's it. And it's just a very simple network setting in Unified Controller. Then the system will automatically create the switch port profile. And as you can see, it's here is the for Unify management VLAN. This one is done by Unify controller automatically once we create the VLAN network. That's it. That's the network setting before you can make changes to your Unify devices. Now let's start to put the first device to the management VLAN. As you may already see, my management VLAN is 192.168 and 15 something. It's different than my default network, which is 192.168.2 something. And my unified controller currently uh, runs on the uh, 15 subnet. It doesn't matter because as long as you can see your device in your unified controller, you can make the setting change and to put it to the management VLAN. Let's do it for the Unify switch. I go to setting. As long as you see services, you should be able to see an option which says management VLAN. And the default is your default network. And in my case, it's the LAN. Now I can change it to manage Unify management VLAN, which we just created in the PFSense and the Unify network. Let me apply changes and wait for several minutes. And after the device is ready, you can see it will be put in the management VLAN and the IP address will be changed. My 24 ports USW switch was already successfully changed. Now, as you can see, the network is Unified Management VLAN and the IP address is already changed to the 
15 subnet. Let's validate the setting one more time. Go to services. Okay, it's under the unified management VLAN. For the switch uh, change, it's very smooth, very easy. The second unified device we want to put to our unified management VLAN is a unified access point. The reason I want to pick this one as a special example is in previous earlier versions of a unified controller, you don't have the unified management VLAN set for AP. So you have to do it in a tricky way. You need to create a special part profile and then put the management VLAN as a native network. Then you tag other VLANs you want to pass through to the AP. So it's a very tricky way. But now everything's changed because you can easily put it to a management VLAN just like a unified switch. Let's do it now. As you can see here, the IP address is two something, so it's still under the LAN network. Then let's go to settings. Then let's find the service section. See the default one is the LAN. Uh, let me change it to management VLAN. That's it. So the exact same way as a unified switch. As you can see, the change is very quick. After less than 10 seconds, it's already done. And the network is changed, but the IP address is still showing the old 2 one. Let me try to restart the AP. Then let's see whether the IP address is changed or not. It seems the, the IP address won't be changed to 15 automatically. So let me reboot it. Unfortunately, after restart the AP, it still get the old LAN IP address. But now, as you can see, it's showing the expected 15 subnet IP address. The reason is correct now is I did this. I go to settings and management. Then I did a trigger provision. After this is done, everything looks good. So apparently there is some bug in the either unified controller or the APs software. It doesn't get the correct IP address. But anyway, now it works. It's not a big deal. Let's move on to the next unified device. The next unified device we are going to change is a redundant power supply. This is USB RPS. I plug the uplink to a unified switch. And as you can see now, it's getting the subnet to something the ip address is under the lan network so now let's see whether we can change it let me click it go to setting and as you can see there's no services section so it's different than normal switch or ap so basically there's no default standard way to change the management vlan but if you're like me and if you already have everything uh, managed under the management VLAN and you leave this odd device in a separate network it might not look good. It doesn't achieve my ultimate purpose, which is I want to put everything under the separate VLAN. Let's see whether we have a workaround because it gets the network IP address through a normal uplink Ethernet cable. Let me go to the uplink device, which is this unified switch. Let me go to this part. Yes. So as you can see, the part 22, the downlink, it says USB RPS. This is the correct part. Then let me click it. Here, under the part profile, I want to change it to unified management VLAN. Remember, in the beginning of the video, I mentioned once you create the network for the management VLAN in your unified controller, the system will automatically generate a port profile. So this is the one. I simply change the uplink port with this port profile. So then let's apply changes. Keep in mind here, we are just making change to the uplink switch instead of the 
RPS device itself. So now the Unify switch already been, uh, the provision is done, but there's nothing changed for this one yet because it doesn't know the part profile is changed. So to make it effective, I need to restart the device. If I do it here, Uh, if I say restart device, as you can see, it's already disabled and here it's already grayed out. Why? Because I already changed the, the uplink port profile. To make it effective, I have to restart the device manually. Because even though here in your unified controller, it seems it's doing something, it's trying to adopt, but it's just in the endless loop ready to adopt, adopting and fail, and then go back to ready to adopt. The reason is it still has this old IP address, but the port profile has already been changed. So basically this device cannot be properly communicating with the unified controller. So I have to go to my server room to manually restart this device. I will be back. I am back from the server room and the device has been restarted as you can see now it's showing the 15 subnet ip address everything looks good right except for one thing so under the network column as you can see it's still showing LAN. why is that because we didn't really change the management vlan because the setting is simply not available for this device. The last unified device we want to change the management network setting is this one, the USB plug. This is a very special small unified device. It's a smart plug and it's connected to the network using Wi-Fi. As you can see, the connection shows my AP in my office. It gets IP address with the two subnet, which is my default network. It's not any special VLAN, it's just the normal network, the default one. Why is that? I believe there must be some uh, software logic inside the device so that when it connects to the Wi-Fi, it simply get the default network. I don't see any setting. If I click here uh, in the USB plug setting, I don't see anything to change this behavior. For example, under network, I don't see any way to force it to become the management network. As you can also see, there's no services uh, section here. So there's no way to change the management network. And But if you saw my other videos, you may know me. Without exhausting all the options, I won't uh, give up. So let me try whether I can force this strange small device to join the management network. I want to start with the Wi-Fi. Uh, there's, there must be something to do with the AP setting. But before that, we need to create a special part profile. Now I'm using the classic UI because I want to show you the part profile. I go to settings and then profile. I choose switch part. This one is the one I created for this exercise. Let me edit it. As you can see, uh, this is a native network. The default value is LAN. I pick the Unify management VLAN. So the native network is the one uh, untagged. At the same time, I want to tag the VLANs which I want to pass the traffic to the AP as well because the AP will not only serve this special smart plug, it will also serve my other devices need to be in uh, this VLANs. So that's why I want to tag other VLANs which I need. So I select the ones I want and then that's it. Now we are back to the Unify controller. This time we want to change the switch part which is connected to my AP. So remember we want to put this USB plug to the management network and this plug is connected to this Unify AP and this unified AP is connected to my switch with a PoE Ethernet cable. 
So let me click this switch and go to settings. I know the third part is connected with my office AP. Then let me click it. And here, now the part profile is all. It is the default one. Uh, native network is my default network, uh, untagged. Now I want to change it to the one we just created, the custom one, USB tag. Then apply changes. As you can see, after the provision for this unified switch is done, it's showing green LED light here, and my USB plug is showing offline, and the AP is showing green. But apparently this uh, plug is not getting new IP address. And here, as you can see, this AP is showing ready to adopt. Why? Because I just changed its part profile. It's in the endless looping mode, I believe. It will keep showing adopting ready to adopt because it's, it gets confused. Because it has a IP address, but its part profile has been changed. And to resolve this, let me do a power cycle on the PoE switch. Let me go to the port 3, then port cycle. And then let's wait till this adoption is done for this AP. Now I figured out why the change didn't work, because I forgot to change the management VLAN setting for this uh, AP. Remember, I just changed the port profile, right? But I forgot to change the management VLAN. So after I changed it, I changed it from the original unified management VLAN to the default LAN, then everything's good. So basically, uh, keep in mind, you either assign the port with a special port for profile with the management VLAN as the native network, then you tag other VLANs, that's option one, or you change the services uh, section, you change the management VLAN. So you cannot do both. That's the reason why initially it didn't work. Now it worked. Even though here it's showing LAN, but as you can see, the IP address is 15 because the part profile is effective. This is just the AP. That's not the real reason why we, we want to do this exercise. We want to change the smart plug. So as you can see, the smart plug already disappeared from here. Apparently it's getting a new IP address. Let me find it. Yes, it's here. Uh, sorry, here, a USB plug. As you can see, it's getting the 15 subnet IP address. It is connecting to the AP, which we just changed. Everything works as ex expected. When I planned this video, I wanted to, as the very last section, I want to introduce how you can adopt your new unified devices in the future after you already utilize the management VLAN. Because uh, if your Unify controller is in the Unify management VLAN, you may have problem when it comes to adopting new Unify devices. It won't work in the initial easy way. So you need to use other approach to adopt your Unify devices. But apparently now we are running too long and we I don't want to make this video super long so I will leave that adoption part in a separate video okay thanks for watching